What is up guys? Welcome back. After testing out a bunch of different decks the past few hours, I am finally satisfied with the deck that I'm using and probably the one that I'm going to use for the rest of this Kingdom of the Court. And so as of today, I think this is the best deck that you can roll with. Obviously, it's going to depend on what cards you have, what cards are available. But since uh, if you caught the video, I don't know, maybe like a week or so ago about prepping for the Platinum Playbook, I'm using a lot of those cards. So I do have multiple uses for those commons and uncommons. But we're going to go over the deck. I'm going to show you what cards I use, why I use those cards, and why this deck is so successful if you have been playing this game so far obviously you have noticed it has changed again since the start of last year uh at the start of last year they used to match you card for card pretty much whatever card tier you were using that's the ones they used then they patched it now they just match pretty much your deck tier overall so you're going to find some cards that are higher some cards are lower and then at the very end sometimes you do get those overpowered cards that you can't beat but with this deck we have not run into that very often we're having a pretty high success rate we have 702 points right now and i've only lost three times since i've started and all three of those games is when i play with momentums on it seems like every time i activate momentum uh the deck their deck at least gets a little bit better and a little bit harder to deal with but jumping straight into what the deck actually looks like this is what it looks like the first column on your left we have uncommon pros uh looking at which ones i actually have anthony simmons we got um alan crab and then the last one is patrick Patterson. These are three of the best, not necessarily the best, but the ones that I liked the most. Um, mostly because Alan Crabb is overall a pretty good and I think the best uncommon. Simmons, really high playmaking, really high offense, and then Patterson for his defense and rebounding. So that's why I put all three of those. I'm in the process of supercharging all of those because I need those for Platinum Playbook. And then we got column two, three, and five are all common pros. Now these are my three favorite common pros. They are, you know, some of the highest rated common cards. Um, Kyle Guy, he might be one point below the highest. But uh, again, I like Kyle because of his high offense, high defense. We got... Uh, Fernando, which has good rebounding and solid offense, solid defense. And then we got uh, Carson Edwards, which has super high offense, super high playmaking. And then the fifth column is rare, untrained cards. Now, the reason why I put that column of rare cards is just so it brings down the deck just a little bit. If I did all of the last four columns, all common pros, they almost always supercharged maxed out their common pros um, in the deck and it made it harder actually when I had it with all common pros in there now how king of the court works if you haven't figured this out yet it takes one card from the first second third fourth and fifth column which is why you see a lot of the guys exactly the same because that way I know I'm going to get that card the last card, the sixth card we found out is taken from only the first column. Last year it used to be taken from a random first, second, or third column, but now it's taken at least up as of today, it's taken from the first column. So you need to have your first column better than all the rest of your cards. You don't necessarily have to use this exact lineup, but I think this format works the best. And if you use this format with a higher tier of cards, then your first column you need to put it at the mat or at least the highest of all the cards on there because that's going to be your first card and it's going to be your sixth card so every single game you will get two cards from the first column now i did say in a video a while back you need to start prepping for platinum playbook now and that's pretty much what these cards are for or from uh the common pros those cards in the second third and fifth column all of those cards are maxed out, they are proed, and they are all supercharged. I will use them all again for Platinum Playbook. Same with the first column, they are uncommon. I will uh, supercharge those, I just don't have enough keys yet, so I'm working on it. Only one of them is supercharged. 
but they will all be supercharged so it's good to be able to use at least multiple cards you have to save these common pros for platinum playbook anyway so i thought why not try it for king of the court to see if it works and so far it's been working great another reason why i chose to use this deck at least lower tier decks is far is because of consistency right if you have rares or ultra rares or epic primes or something like that when you put them in the columns you know, you might be able to, I guess, organize them by position so you can kind of get a consistent pull on what you're going to get. But I kind of wanted to space it out, right? I wanted one guy to have very high offense playmaking so it could beat the offense playmaking ones if that so be is one of the things that I have to beat. Another guy with high offense and high defense and another guy with rebounding. That's why it's kind of spread out as three different types of players, all of them being the same player, because I know I'm going to get all three of those guys at the same time. And since uh, column one, I'm getting two of the same guys or two of the ones from column one. That's why they are different. That way I can get a variety. Sometimes it's going to be high offense, high rebounding, high defense. It'll just be two different guys that I can use for different situations. Okay, so we're gonna jump into a game, let you see what it looks like, kind of give you an idea of the strategy that I use. Um, this obviously isn't 100% foolproof, but like I said, uh, I've only lost three times so far. All three of those games have been versus, or when I had a momentum active. So uh, first thing that we need to do, or the first thing that I always try to do is try to get rid of the rare. It doesn't always work. When I have momentums though, the deck is a little bit different. Um, every time I have a momentum active, it seems like the first couple rows are all cards that are lower than all of mine. And then at the end, they're a lot higher. When I don't use a momentum, it seems like they're more geared towards uh, an average overall in the hundreds. But we'll dump off that rare first, kind of skip the times two. Sometimes you can't hit every single times two. And at least when, if I have to use an uncommon in the first row to, you know, beat a times two, I usually never do it just because of the fact I want to have those uncommons towards the end, just in case I really need that extra boost. Offense, defense, you know how much this comes up in uh, in King of the Court, which is one of the reasons why I like Kyle Guy. Now, as offense, defense combined, he has the highest combined stats of the two. So, uh, it's obviously, his rebounding and playmaking is really low, but that offense, defense, I always find a use for it in this actual game mode. We have one epic off to the side right there, which uh, is a good sign. Usually, when they usually most of the time, they have at least one high tier card in the third row, one in the second, sometimes if it's not in the third. And then at the end, it's usually something like 150s or something, and it's usually pretty close. Since the very last stat is defense and rebounding, those are the two highest stats for Patrick Patterson. So that is why uh, we'll save him for the very end, even though they don't have a times two for the second to last row. And uh, we should be good. I mean, the last one is usually never higher than both of these cards combined. And this one's even lower than that. I probably could have beat it with Fernando right there. But uh, as you see, yeah, we got times two on three out of the five, which is normally how it works. Um, like I said, it's usually only the times when I have momentums that it gets a little bit more challenging and a little bit more lopsided as far as them using lower tier cards in the beginning, higher tier cards at the end, which makes it a lot tougher to beat. Now, just so you can see what the deck looks like when you use momentums with this thing, I just went ahead and bought me a momentum. That way I can put it in the video, show you how the deck changes, at least the AI's deck changes, makes it a little bit more challenging. Uh, it doesn't always change it, but out of all the losses we've had, it's only been when we've had momentums. Even though this time it's starting off very similar to the last deck, uh, a lot of times when we play with these momentums active, the first row or the second row is usually really low, low cards like common untrained in the 60s and 70s, and then the rest of them is really high. We really want to get rid of the green card, the rare card, just because we don't want to be stuck at the end. I'm usually not as worried about that when I play uh, without momentums, but when I have momentums, it's almost crucial 
because like I said, usually towards the end, um, they seem to activate, but uh, yeah, at least we got this one. We're able to get rid of it, even though I had to waste a support card just in case we would have got playmaking. The times two one is going to be really close if I would use Patrick Patterson. I think I could beat it if it was only offense and rebounding or defense and rebounding. But if it was rebounding and playmaking, I don't think it would work. So we're going to go with the Kyle guy, get rid of a common pro, kind of avoid the times two because it's obviously better to win at the end than to lose and get the times twos. Now, as you see, we come to the second to last row and both of these cards are still really high. This is what I was talking about when you use momentums with this deck. I don't know if it's like this with any other deck, but at least when I use momentums, it's like this. So we're going to have to try with Simmons. Hopefully he can pull it out. Um, Sometimes he can't. That's why you have the other common pro. But and then at the end, hopefully it's just lower than my other one. We're going to give this one a shot. It's almost 50 50. I think if we're going to win it. And OK, so we did win it. I don't know if we would have it, won it with the other one. I know it was really close. And then the last one again, same tier up at the top. This is when it comes, you know, that's why I said it's really close when you do the momentums. But when I'm not using momentums, the deck so far is 100% success. We actually went through the whole thing without doing it. And we got three out of the four that time. So still successful when you have the momentums. But as you see, it's a little bit more challenging. But yeah, that's going to do it, guys. Uh, like I said before, you know, if you have other decks that you use, please post them in the comments for everybody else or post them in the Discord or something like that. Uh, share with the community. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something. And if you haven't already, at least if you use a different deck, you still need to prep for Platinum Playbook. And these are the same cards that I'm going to use, the same common pros I'm going to use for Platinum Playbook when it comes. You're going to need them anyway, so you might as well start leveling them up and uh, proing them and using them or whatever. But hopefully your grind is going good. We will stream again. I am thinking that we'll stream again, maybe Sunday, maybe Saturday. I don't know. We'll just have to see how everything goes. Y'all take it easy. Hopefully you enjoyed. I am out. Peace.